Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to the third candidate forum for our candidates for in Fayette County, Tennessee. I'm going to step back a little bit. Um, this is the third of four candidate forums. Tonight uh, we have uh, candidates for Fayette County School Board, districts one, two, and three. And then I also want to remind you that next week uh, on June 9th, uh, we're doing this again, and this is that will be for district attorney, public defender, general sessions judge, and register of deeds. And um, I'd like to uh, thank Warren Community Church and uh, Pastor Ken for allowing us to uh, for hosting this event. And then at this time, I'd like Pastor Ken to come and lead us in a prayer and pledge. All right, if you would stand with me please as we have opening prayer and then remain standing as we pledge allegiance to the Lord. Lord, we are grateful today uh, for your love for us and for your presence in our lives, for your blessing and your promise to be with us always and to never leave us nor forsake us. Pray that tonight, Lord, will be a, a great time of information and a time in which, Lord, the, those that are able to be here with us tonight will be able to share clearly their ideas and their hopes and their vision of their <clears throat> responsibilities that they will have and the positions for which they are seeking to fill. We ask you to give them clarity of thought and for us tonight to conduct ourselves in a way that will bring honor to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. And before we begin, I'd like to go over uh, some of the rules, just let you know what the format is. Uh, we have three sections again tonight uh, for uh, the three different districts that, uh, that we have. And each section will take approximately 30 minutes. Each candidate will be allowed to come up and give their opening remarks, introduce themselves. Uh, they will have three minutes to do that. And after, after that, we will open it up for questions. Uh, and each candidate will have one minute to answer the questions. And we will go uh, allowing each candidate an opportunity to answer questions. Uh, that way, not just one candidate gets all of the questions. And uh, so far, you know, like I said, this is our third uh, forum. Uh, so far, everything has run uh, very smoothly. But in the case uh, that, say, one candidate is uh, attacked or can uh, on an issue, that candidate will then be allowed to come back and give a response to that attack. We haven't had that happen so far, and uh, but you never know. And. Um, at the end, if, there, if time is permitting, candidates will be allowed to come back and give closing remarks uh, up to two minutes each. Again, that's only if time is permitting. And I think that is all of, uh, of the uh, instructions. We do have a timekeeper that will uh, be holding up a, a 30 second uh, uh, mark once you get to 30 seconds. Uh, so keep an eye on on him right there, and he'll call you down if you run over time. I'll uh, hold this up, and that way I won't distract. And, and that way you will have no, you have 30 minutes, 30 seconds left. If that doesn't work, I'll be you. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Ken as our moderator this evening, and we'd like for uh, the first candidates to come up. Your names are uh, right in front of the seats right here. Thank you. All right, our candidates will make their way up forward of District of 1 School Board. We'll come right on up. Tonight for District 1 school board. All right. All right. Well, 
Mr. Haley, you will have uh, time to introduce yourself, three minutes. In fact, uh, we have allotted 30 minutes for this time, and so uh, enjoy yourself for the first three minutes, and we'll see how it goes from there. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, first of all, I receive a phone call. I don't, uh, the guy did identify himself, but now I don't remember who he was on the phone. So I don't know who to thank for being here, for making that phone call, but thank you and you know everybody for allowing me to speak. Okay, first of all, I'm a lifelong resident of Fayette County. I uh, born and raised in Fayette County. Uh, let's see, January 2013, I retired from the uh, state, work as a state employee. I'm familiar with the schools in some ways because I worked for 20 plus years as a substitute teacher. I worked five years as an adult education instructor. Uh, I was educated through the Fay County school system as well as uh, my children. Now some people ask me, they say, uh, well, what would you do when you get on the school board if, you know, I'm elected? I said, well, first of all, I'll try to do the right thing. I said, but you have to understand, I want to be one of nine individuals. But I would try to do my best, you know, with the way the policies are and, you know, we have, you know, procedure and things we have to go by. But uh, I would, you know, always have the best interest of the students as well as the employee of the school system at heart, you know. And I said, that's really about all I can really say that I can just really do for a fact, you know. So um, I said, that's why I run for this position in order to be a part of making a positive impact, as I say, for the students and the fellow, uh, you know, employees of the school you know, system. I said because I'm not running for any money because there's not any money to be made being a school board member. And, but uh, I'm not in it for any money. I'm in it because I thank God that I'm retired and I have the time to devote to it. And this just, you know, my interest, you know, for running. And um, I guess that's just about uh, all, well, no, then another thing, I'm of the Baptist faith. I attend the uh, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church there on Yum Yum Road. I'm a trustee, I'm a Sunday school teacher, and I've had enough training, even from being reared by my grandparents and then training through Sunday school and listening to countless sermons to know to do the right thing, you know. And so uh, my guide are not people, but my guide is God himself, you know, so. That's what I, you know, the way I conduct myself, and that's the way that I try to live. And most days, I'm not going to say every day, I do pray and ask God just to help me to do the right thing. So, it's just about right. it for well, telling you. For your introductory statements. Okay. Just remain there because you're our only, our only candidate. Are there any questions for our candidate tonight for school board district one? Mr. Haley, yes, sir. Uh, what would be your approach to dealing with the fact of the low performance at the state level, uh, the low performance of our school system as we rank towards the bottom of the state? So you mean, I mean, what do you, what are my thoughts on us ranking that way? Is that what you're asking? Uh, what, what would you do as a school board member to correct that? Well, Mr. Leggett, uh, you know, as I've said, I would just, um, just do the right things, all I can say, and hopefully by me trying to do what is right, then maybe it'll trickle down, perhaps, you know, to others to follow suit. I mean, they're really just about, you know, all I can say to, you know, your question, you know. But I know one thing, though, 
I know from many of the meetings that I have attended, you know, um, that um, I didn't like the way a lot of them, you know, ended, uh, you know, with discussion, with the the, the division and the, uh, you know, personal attacks, you know, and all that, you know, kind of things. But again, as I say, I just try to do just the best I can to help overall to make a better impact for the whole school system as a whole. That's about all I can, you know, tell you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, all right. Sir. Is there another question? Yes. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, your being here says a lot considering that you're the only one out of five that shared it. The experts recommend people, when they apply for a job, that they try to find out as much as they can about the job before they go in to, for the interview. You're, on, you're here for the interview tonight. And you're, what is the, what is the job description for that you're running for tonight. What what does the job entail? Uh, it, it has a lot of responsibility and I'd like to hear from you tell us what that job is. Well now from my understanding now to be a school board member you're gonna have a lot of uh, information that would be presented to you before you uh, you know attend you know meeting. So I would say that for anyone that's running for a school board to be actively involved, to, to be actively involved, you know, with the people in your district and get out there in amongst the people and see what their thoughts are and what's going on and to get them to come, you know, to the meeting to know what is, you know, going on and to, as much as possible, to know the issues and to not be afraid to stand on what you think is right. So I guess uh, mainly the main uh, description for this job is to, to be as knowledgeable as you can about what's you know going on and, and, and what is going to affect the people you represent and stick to what you think is the right thing. And above all, just be fair, open and honest with people. And see, in that way, you know, everything will be all right, this way I look at it. Another question? I think I can talk about my final mile. Okay, okay, just in case I can. Mr. Howie. And I don't have any children. Hey, Haley. Haley, that's okay. Right. Okay, yeah, okay. Right okay. Anyway, um, I don't have any children in the uh, Fayette County school system at this time. My boys are all, you know, big and grown now on their own. But what I have perceived, and you know, in talking to my neighbors and reading the Fayette County, there's always problems and arguments about the money that the school board is allotted as a budget, and then asking the county commission for more money. So have you had an opportunity to look at what's going on in school fiscally? And if so, what do you think we need to do to keep the schools functioning at an adequate level within their budget? Okay. Well, first of all, no, I haven't looked at anything, but of all the meetings I've um, uh, you know, attended, you, you are correct. They said money be allotted, but then it turned out that the money is not being spent the way that it is supposed to have been spent. Now, from all the meetings that I have attended. Now, as far as I know, I know the uh, county commissioners, that they sort of, uh, well, I guess, you know, control the money or control what, well, not really control, well, control it in the sense that they have to approve what money goes into the, you know, school system. And so I would guess that the county commissioners will have to be the one to hold the school board accountable for spending the money the way it is supposed to be spent. And when they don't do that, then they should you know, hold them accountable. So that's about the only way I can, can say for it to, you know, to really work, you know, because it has to be accountability. It can't just be money can just be spent, 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 you know. It has to be 
Well, I want to say it has to be spent the way it's supposed to, but not necessarily, because it has happened that it has not been. So, on that, I can say for the county commissioner, just have to hold the um, school board accountable. And I know they really hold the school board accountable. Help. All right. Are there other questions? Well, I'll have a question. Is the county school board able to hold the, uh, the county commission able to hold the school board accountable? Well, that's, uh, that's, our, our questions for tonight are focused on our uh, on our okay, candidates, okay. not on our okay, well, I, on our commission. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. So, so let's stay focused tonight. On that. Uh, okay. Would so, you like to answer that question? Well, I really can't answer it. Okay. I mean, it's more. I mean, that's, that's why I was you know, so, see, I really, I, you know. I, Wait, right. We're it, it, trying to say that the county commission county commissioners should hold the school board, board accountable. That's my understanding. But now, if it's okay, now, uh, Mr. Leggett, you like to address that question, please do. Well, as I say this, uh, uh, I think I'm right to say that the, that the um, county commissioners, well, someone has to be responsible for the money, and I'm saying that is on the part of the county commissioner. But if I am wrong, then I can be corrected. That, that's just my understanding. But we can get it, you know, just the correct answer right. right here. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Are there other questions? Okay. Gentleman in the green shirt. I look around here, I don't see anybody, maybe one or two, have two age children here tonight. Uh, probably wonder what those old gray headed people are doing here. But we do pay taxes. Oh yes sir. And and uh, I'm not big on the computer, but I looked on Facebook the other day and there must be five hundred mamas in open worried about where their kids are gonna go to school next year. Why are they getting on a bus going past Oakland Elementary to go who knows where? What can we do to fight this current situation in, in Fayette County? That's why Fayette County has grown over the last ten years because people got out of Shelby County. Yeah. Okay. Did you understand this question? Yes, sir. I, 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 I do believe I understood uh, what he has said. I had uh, a young lady about four or five days ago to ask me, she said, now why did my child live close to one school, but he or she has to be sent to another school? Now, as I told her, I'm going to give it to you just the way I understand it. They have this thing in place now called controlled choice, whereby it has to do with this uh, desegregation order out of Washington, some about a lawsuit that was filed in the 60s, whereby, whereby they said they have to follow this because they have to have a certain amount of uh, for the racial makeup. So we can have a certain amount of students in different schools. That's the only way I can explain it, though it has to do with this thing called control choice. We had a lot of meetings throughout the county, and people, a lot of parents say it's not fair, it's not right, but I don't think I can tell them if what they say this court order say must be done. So this. And really, you said to fix it, I mean, I really can't see, uh, when you say fix it, if you mean in terms of, uh, if I don't want my child to go to one particular school, but to go to another one, I really don't think it can be fixed in the sense of, they have to follow that court order. Yeah, so, that's about all I can, you know, tell you on that. Alright. Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right, Mr. Lickman. I have one more. Is what is your position on Common Core? Now, Common Core that came up, and I do have information in my folder there on Common Core. Now, Common Core. There's a lot of people for it and a lot of people against it, but you ask me what I think about it. Well, I really don't have a, I can't really give you a full decision on Common Core tonight. I mean, because uh, 
I mean, I have read, you know, some information on it. Some people say it shouldn't be implemented because, um, you know, the way it's set up. It involves a high uh, uh, order of thinking and reasoning, and there's a, a lot that said it shouldn't be put forth on our, you know, students because it really be a handicap. Now, I know the state legislator, they are for it, but throughout the nation, there's some states for it, some against it, you know, so um, I really, just to give it to you straight, I, I, I um, just still reading information on it, you know, concerning Common Core. So that's about all I can you know, tell you. All right. Good question. Anyone? All right. Mr. Do you personally believe that the school board should live within their budget? Oh, he said, do I personally think? I, I, I personally think they should live within their budget, but then of course, you know, we have to allow some room for, you know, if an emergency situation come up, you know, something that really legit, you know, and if they have to spend money that, you know, they, uh, that wasn't in the budget, for a reason like that, but overall, I think they should. There should be a budget, and they should be held accountable to living, you know, within that budget. But sometimes things do happen, you know. I mean, we know sometimes things do happen. But so, what do you do personally when an emergency comes up at your house that you haven't, you know, really uh, planned for? What types of things do you cut back? Hmm. Well, really, I, I I try to keep a few dollars on the side just in case if. Uh, well, well, if the air conditioner go out or get about a new stove or, I mean, you know what I'm saying, you know, myself personally, you know, that, that's what I do, you know, try to have a, a little something set back because you never know when something might come up and from time to time some things are going to come up. Something, you know, is eventually going to happen that, you know, you might not have, uh, you, you know, that you might not have, you know, expected, you know. And have you personally in your family Oh yes, yeah, definitely so. And when you are the, um, the you know, the, um, uh, let, let me slow it down a little bit. But uh, what I'm saying, though, you know, when you're the head of a household, you know, you know, it left up to you to make those decisions. I mean, you know, you can let your family know what's going on, but ultimately, it left to, well, I just say, you know, the man of the house. You, know what you mean? feel comfortable telling your other school board members what? Like, you know, they're going to have to cut some things out if something else comes up. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, comfortable telling um, anyone, no matter who it is, what I have to tell them when it's something that's right, you know. And uh, I mean, not in an arrogant way, you know, but just to, you know, just point it out. Of course, I've gotten in trouble for it, but... Well, when I say I've gotten in trouble for it, I mean, you know, you help people to, you know, look at you a certain way or to say negative things about you. But like I tell them, no, this has been the problem it is now, no, just, just bring it out in the open, you know, and I think right of win out every time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, are there other questions? Mr. Haley, you've been very gracious, and you, and since we are way ahead of time, if you'd like to make a closing statement oh, okay. of some form, then please take this time to make a closing statement. He was standing. Do you want to say anything? No, he's, he's one of our... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. You don't have a question, do you? Okay. Uh, well, again, like I say, uh, I'm born and raised here in Fayette County, and running for the school board, you know, just to help to be a part of the overall system to try to make a difference. I thank God that I'm um, you know, able to work in, you know, for the state of Tennessee for 32 years and four months and retired. My heart is in it. I have the time to do it. And as I've told people, I'm not just in this race just to be doing something. I'm really in it to try to help to make 
you know, an impact for the better. And everyone that you know, really know me, and, and I take pride in this, I, I talk it a lot. The one thing they'll say about me, they say, Mike Haley, you the same. I consider that a compliment because I'm the same with all people. I don't have a face for everybody. I'm just open and uh, just give it the way I see it. I won't get with a certain group and tell them one something, then get with another group and tell them something. Like I always tell people, if you hear anything negative about me, don't just take it at face value. I said, just come to me, ask me, you know. And I just say, if I am elected, I'll just try to do the best job I can do. And when I say this, I really mean this with all honesty and humility. I'll try to do the best job that I can do, read all materials that I need to read to be up on what they're going to be uh, voted on or talk about. And above all, I'm sure I even pray more then, just help God to help me just to continue to stand and just stand to do what is right. And like I told him, I'm old enough, I'm old enough that, uh, you know, I, I can speak my mind, you know, but when I say speak it, not to speak it to be disrespectful to anyone, but, you know, for the right thing. And I'm going to say this, I come in it to one gentleman that uh, I just like the way he speak up at meetings, you know, when I say speak up at meetings, you have to take a stand, you know, you, if you believe something that to be right, then just get out there and stick with it and just say it and hold to it. I mean, you, you can't uh, compromise so quite, because see, once you start compromising on whatever it is, you always be compromising. You might not always win, but one thing about it though, you can have that integrity to say, well, he or she or whoever, they are for the right thing. And as I say, right always win out. All right, Mr. Haley, thank you. Let's thank Mr. Haley for coming. Mm -hmm. As he makes his way down, uh, Dennis, I guess, will be coming changing the names. And for our Fayette County School Board District 2 candidates, if you're here, do we have any District 2 candidates here? Okay, we have one. All right, he'll be getting your names up here in just a moment. And so wherever your names are, if you'll just find your place.
just sit, sit where your name tag is. Awesome. We have Mr. Reddit. Yes, sir. And we have, uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Sipowitz. Sipowitz. All right. Uh, remember, guys, as you are speaking and introducing yourself for the three minutes, he will hold up a little piece of paper that has 30 seconds. That means that you have 30 seconds left. So you have time to transition and wrap it up there. Okay. All right. And Mr. Red, you start. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm Robert Reddick, School Board District 2. As of August, I'll be on the school board 10 years. It's been a nice time some days. <laughs> so, um, I guess tonight, most of you, I think, out here know me. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm running again on my record. Um, I've not voted for busing. I voted against it very strongly. I've not voted for boundary changes in our schools. I fought that very strongly. I fought what I think has become known as the Pittman contract. Uh, actually, I won that one. And we finally located someone to do it at half the price. Um, I've always spoke, voted to spend your money efficiently for the best of the education. Sometimes it, it appears that it's a little more, but you've got to weigh that with the children. Um, it was, again, I, I've been here, I've done, I, I vote, I've voted as you've come to me and asked me. Um, I don't believe that the county commission at this point in time would need any more money. I think there's some changes we need to make. Unfortunately, I'm on the low side. There's a Miss Pittman and a few others that are kind of running the show and micromanaging everything. Um, she's even, I, I'm beginning to think she may be the director of schools. I don't know. And I'm going to leave it at that, and I'll give you more time to ask me questions later. Thank you. Mr. Red, Mr. Sipowitz, if you come and you have three minutes to introduce yourself, remember the timekeeper will show you when you have 30 seconds left. Yes, thank you. Um, you all probably know I'm not from here originally because I don't have the accent. Um, my wife and I moved here from the state of Maine uh, over three years ago to live near our uh, son, daughter-in-law, and our grandchildren. Uh, and we've been very warmly welcomed by people here. I've made a lot of friends. Um, I, I go to the 24-7 in the morning. That's where I first met a bunch of people. I'm going to overview briefly. Uh, what my experience in my career was when I was in the state of Maine. Most of it was served in the Department of uh, Children's Services. This is what's called here. Um, I began as a uh, children's services caseworker for mostly teenagers who were committed to state custody through the juvenile criminal court. Um, I enrolled children in school. I went to special education and regular education meetings for that. Um, hooked up children with mental health services um, and a variety of other services. I did a lot of court work in that job. Uh, anything from uh, freeing children to be adopted uh, if that was necessary or trying to return them to either their uh, mother or father, one or the other or both, or other family members. Um, my second job with state government for nine years was uh, negotiating and administering contracts every year for a variety of uh, services for child victims of a crime and uh, women victims of domestic violence. Um, as such, I uh, negotiated contracts uh, to approve budgets. Um, some of the services were with the Maine's district attorney offices for crime victim services for children and women who had to go through the court process, including testifying and help prepare them for that. Um, also uh, negotiated contracts for mental health services for children and families in and out of the uh, foster care system, uh, both uh, private families as well as foster care system, uh, substance abuse services, and um, child abuse prevention education programs, and last um, would be uh, pregnant and parenting teen programs to help support young mothers. Um, and my final job in state government for 10 years was the director of uh, the transition program for all teenagers and young adults in Maine State Foster Care 
to help them uh, not only uh, exit foster care if they didn't get adopted by anybody or find a, a, a return to family, uh, to help them with plans for college after high school and um, that sort of thing. And uh, I wrote a lot of policies uh, myself in conjunction with a, a youth leadership team made up of kids in foster care. Also, um, I did joint policy writing with the Department of Education in Maine, mental health and corrections. Um, a lot of my career has been, you know, centered around working with kids who had a lot of trouble in their family. So I'm well acquainted with that and well aware of it. And um, lastly, I served on a number of boards in my last job um, as director of that program, um, the state's juvenile justice board, advisory board, um, two boards for young people in schools who are uh, facing special transition challenges after high school. That would be special education students, vocational education students, and students with uh, various forms of uh, disability challenges. So that's a little bit of my background. And what I've seen here, um, I'm seeing 30 seconds there, I think. Yes, sir, it's been up for a while. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I just have plenty of time to answer questions. So All right, that's fine. I wanted to get that in because I'm not from here and everybody knows Mr. Reddit, I'm sure, here. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Sippen. Thank you. Yeah, if you'll be seated now, we'll move to our time of questions. The first question will go to Mr. Reddick, the second question uh, to Mr. Sipowicz, and we'll rotate uh, in that order. Is there a question right here? And as you come to answer the question, please come to the microphone. Thank you. Um, you mentioned this lady's name, Dana, or the what? Um, you made it sound like she might have hijacked the school board, <laughs> uh, micromanaging, whatever. Uh, what about the superintendent and the chairman? Is, is she chairman of the board? No, sir, she's not. She's not. Okay, well, what are the chairman and the superintendent doing? Are they not running their meeting? There was a. Is it. I'm, is yes, my sir. mic is working? Okay. Um, we had a meeting one or two meetings back just to give you a quick example and we run into Robert's rules of order except if it's in a policy or a procedure the chairman made the motion for let me back it up I didn't mention a person's name I, I, I said what is known as the Pittman contract let's make that part so you I'll let you take it for where that's worth but the chairman made a motion for the Pittman contract for Dana Pittman to have a contract with the school system I objected very strongly because the chairman had voted for this contract previously that, and had, it had been voted down. So not being on the prevalent side, you're not allowed to bring back a old idea. Being, you have to be on the prevalent side. He overruled me as the chair. Um, I did learn, though, from the director of schools under this micromanaging. I still have a few more. Uh, to change the contract just a little bit. We need to add a few more things in a, in a director's contract. This, um, it's got too many loopholes in it because it is being micromanaged by a school board. It's pretty much hijacked. All right, thank you, Mr. Reddy. Second question. Please. I'd like to add to that question, please. Well, our, no, sir, our, next, our rules here, the questions rotate. Sorry. Next question would be for Mr. Simpson. So that each one of our candidates has appropriate time to answer the questions. Good evening. I'm having trouble seeing because the lights are right in my eyes here. Oh, there you, right oh, there there you go. Is that Reggie? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I see you now. Uh, I want to ask you the same question I asked the previous gentleman since you're not on the school board. In your opinion, what is the job of a, of a school board member? Um, it's not what was described by Mr. Reddit. Um, that is far overstepping the bounds of a board member. Um, as I see it, a board is to oversee the job performance of the director of schools and, and the staff. And um, I see a lot of the uh, role and job responsibilities being taken over by the individual mentioned by Mr. Reddit. Um, that's clearly inappropriate. Uh, giving a contract to that person is inappropriate because it's a huge conflict of interest. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, it just it just is is totally wrong. And I know perhaps and you know maybe 
that this lady is uh, means well, wants to do well, wants things to go right, but she's far overstepped her bounds. And in some ways, and I'm not sure how this all works out because I wasn't at the meetings when this happened, but uh, uh, been allowed to overstep uh, her role and responsibility as a board member. Um, and I believe she may be on every single committee on that board. That doesn't seem right to me either. Other people should be allowed to be uh, more participatory in the various committees on that board. And that's it. That's now, Mr. Rick, your name was actually called in that. Would you like to have a rebuttal for that? Uh, unless I misunderstood, I think he agreed with me. Yes, we were okay. addressing the same board member. Am I, I correct? To give you the opportunity. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I was. Called. I don't think he was saying I did anything wrong. Am I correct? Right. Well, the okay. next question is for you. Then. Okay. Since we've been talking about Ms. Pittman and a contract, what kind of contract to sign? This was a edulog, it's supposed to have been an edulog contract bus routing program. It turned into Ms. Pittman running the transportation. The the director, she pretty much took over as a as a department head actually of transportation. Um, this contract, the first contract with her was actually prior to her being on the school board. It ended while she was on the, after she was elected on the school system um, as a school board member. Second contract, that was roughly around $40,000. Second contract that she brought forward to us somewhere in the same general area of $40,000 I opposed, but she was able to receive that contract as a board member. The third one, a couple months ago, was going to be the same. It's, and these are all edgelog rerouting. Um, it's going to be approximately forty thousand dollars. So that, if, if she'd have received all three of them, that'd have been in excess of a hundred thousand dollars to route our bus systems on an edgelog contract. With the school system has now hired another individual that's doing the job that that we can hire as a employee for half the money. All right, thank you. Mr. Sipowicz, is a question for Mr. Sipowicz? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Mr. Sipowicz, uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked before. With the schools ranking near the bottom in the state, what is your plan to improve the educational opportunities for the children? Well, um, I'd like to look at what's causing uh, the test scores to be so low. Um, my guess, it might be something around, and I need some more information on this, but it might be something around how personnel are managed in this district who have historically, uh, year after year after year, been performing poorly, and or if they have in one school, they, if they fail in that school after two or three years, they're passed on to another. That's my guess. And uh, research shows that if you have one pretty poor teacher in a given year, it takes several years for that student or those students in that classroom to catch up. So it really is important what the quality is of your teachers and your, your support staff in the schools. If there are some weak links, my guess is it's probably that's at least a piece, maybe a significant piece of what's going on with low test scores. I'd like to get at that. I don't know how I'm going to do it or I would do it, but I I have, I have a feeling I could do it, as long as I'm not stonewalled by people. Um, I, I just, I, I'm really disappointed to hear what I've heard since I moved down here about the quality of education in the public schools in this county, and I would like to be part of trying to rectify that if I can. All right, thank you, Mr. Question from Mr. Reddy. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sipowicz answered the question regarding the uh, inappropriateness of that contract and uh, having more or less hijacked your school system. Uh, I would suggest that what needs to be done is you need to ask an attorney general's opinion and uh, get to the bottom of what's going on. 
you have legal matters there, and I'm not qualified to get into those. Um, yes, sir, would you? I'll answer your question, please. All right. Um, my question is, uh, well, first of all, I am running for county commission. If I am elected, you will have someone you can turn to, and I will. Well, this is not time for your political I'm speech right now. Please ask your question. Ask question, but I need to listen. Yes, sir, ask your question. Stay focused on that. Okay. If someone from uh, off the school board, a county commissioner, were to offer to help you if you can't do it through your school board, would you accept help in the way of, uh, in the regard of them seeking an attorney general opinion as to um, this person in hijack your system? Sir, I have uh, several different attorney general opinions. I would be happy to share them with you. I was actually waiting till after this election to move forward with that, is to let, get the election past us. Uh, I have no issue working with any county commissioner. I, actually, I have a fairly decent relationship with my county commissioners. We speak occasionally. Um, if it's a real issue, they have no problem. They have my cell phone number, they call me. If I have an issue, I call them. Um, in fact, at one point in time, I was accused of sleeping with the county commission at a board meeting because I was trying to get along with my commissioners. And I think it has to be unified. It has to be one team. If we're going to educate our children and move our county forward, we have to work together. Thank you, Mr. Good. Question for Mr. Sippel. Yes. Mr. Sippel, uh, the former uh, school board candidate was asked the question, what is your opinion of Common Core? Uh, would you repeat that, please? I didn't quite catch it. What is your opinion of Common Core? Common Core, um, there's some things I like about it. I mean, it really, um, it teaches children to think just beyond a rote answer, kind of the way we were educated in school, that you have to do some critical thinking um, and analysis. And I think, in some ways, um, our children are, underprepared for higher education due to the fact that they're not being taught or learning in a way that goes just beyond uh, pat answers or canned answers on tests and things like that. Now I, I will admit I don't know a great deal about that but there are some things I've heard that I like about it and then there may be some things that I might not but I, I'm not that well versed in that at this point. I've heard it's controversial, I know that, and, and extremely disliked by a great many people. I know that. Thank you. Question from Mr. Reddy. What is your opinion or position on uh, grants that maybe the worst part of them is they expire. So what is your opinion of grants that are state, federal? It, it depends on what the grant's for, what, what we have to do to receive the grant. Uh, if it's a grant to fix my schools up, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to take it. If it's a grant to put somebody in place and, and create a, an, an employment agency putting people to work that we can't pay for when it's over with, I'm not for that. Uh, we have to work within our means of our budget as we have today. Again, grants are wonderful. Unfortunately, they come from the federal, a lot of them come from the federal government. And I feel that at this point in time, federal government's kind of a little deep in, in our business as it is. Um, if, if there was any way that the state could pick it up and local money, I would love to just step away and say, we're gonna, be, we're gonna stand on our own as Tennessee and as our county. But it would have to, again, it would have to depend on what the grant, how it works. And, and there's so many different types. I apologize that I couldn't answer it any better than that. All right. Question for Mr. Sipowicz. Mr. Sipowicz, you mentioned that Common Core is controversial, and I assure you it is. Uh, in fact, this morning, the paper had an uh, article in there about the state of Oklahoma rejecting the Common Core. Apparently, after it's been approved, and now they rejected it. Ronald Reagan, years ago, turned it down because it came through the, the United Nations, and he called them a bunch of crooks and, and did away with it. 
what assurance do we have that you will do your research and determine what Common Core is? You said you were not that familiar with it. So what, uh, how would you assure us that you would really dig into this and see what it is before you get forward? I would not make any decisions based on being ill-informed. Um, I would have to know a whole lot more about it before I could decide one way or the other whether I, whether I was for or against it, but I can certainly assure you I would not uh, make decisions off the cuff. I just don't, that's not what I do, not what I've done. I need to know, and I will admit when I don't know something. All right. Question for Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy, uh, again, uh, considering the fact that we rank near the bottom in the state academically, uh, and you've been there 10 years, how do you explain and how do you propose to remedy the fact that we have 260 teachers and 277 plus non-teacher employees in the system? I believe that's going to you mentioned because I've been there 10 years the, when, when I got on the school board until very recently it's been a really slow ride but it has moved forward it's been some bumps back a little and then moved forward and back a little the last couple years it's well back it up a little further we the last director he decided he was going to take all of our money and give it to his friends there on, on the school board um, I, I I thought this was out in the public, but I, I think it may have been done in an executive session, but I don't think it's hidden. It needs to be hidden. We, um, we talked to our attorneys to recover or recoup that money so that we could to assist in our educating our children, and um, they researched it. They came back to us and told us it would cost more money than it would to, re to, to gain what money we would get in return. It would cost us more than what we would receive and they advised us not to do that. Um, to move forward from this day forward to make, to make our scores better, again, I think it needs to come back to the, to the director's contract. It's, there's a loophole in there where the scores are not, are, not tied, are not tied into his contract. I think that needs to be, and if he can't move it forward because it's actually his responsibility. If he can't move it forward, we need a new director. We need somebody that can do the job. Um, as a board member, your job is to set policy and, and see if that policy is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Mr. Red. Question for Mr. Sipovich. Yes, sir. Yeah. What I would like to know is exactly... Um, yeah. Exactly... <laughs> exactly what authority does the school board really have regarding Common Core? Isn't that something that's actually done by the school system and that the, I mean, does the board really have any authority over whether or not that is implemented? I believe that it is a requirement of the State Department of Education right now. I mean, that's what I think it is. I mean, I don't think the school board has any authority at this point in time to just not do it. So I think Tennessee has adopted that, yeah. Right. Question for Mr. Redd. Robert, uh, you just mentioned the stipends that were spread out across the system by the former superintendent. What is your opinion of stipends at this point? Would you be in favor of eliminating stipends being paid? It, it depends on the stipend. Um, and we've got football coaches, or, or not just that, we have athletic coaches, uh, we have cheerleading coaches, we have different people that their, their extra pay is called a stipend. Um, where I work at, if, when I go to work, my boss tells, has, you're, this is what I get paid. That's it. He tells me, do, I do my job. And if I've got a little extra time, he tells me to do this job over here. I do what I'm told to do, because I've agreed to work for my pay. Um, the idea of the stipends for paying teachers and other people extra money for 
work performed during the same pay period, the same time frame, I have issue with that. I do take big issue with that because I believe you're already being paid to do, to give me this amount of hours and do, do what I've asked of you. Uh, again, the coaches, athletics, that's after school. That's over and above the time frame that, that we've asked of them. I think there should be stipends there. But the rest of it, I think it should be done away with. Thank you. Mr. Red, question for Mr. Sipowicz. Any other questions for Mr. Sipowicz? All right. Well, we're still running ahead of time. And uh, Mr. Red, if you'd like to have a two-minute closing statement, then go ahead and do that. And then, Mr. Sipowicz, you will follow. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I want to thank you for inviting me here to speak in front of you tonight and, and have the opportunity to answer some of your questions. Um, it's always a great crowd here. I mean, nobody gets ready to beat up anybody. But um, again, thank you. And on Election Day, please come vote. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, being able to come here tonight and as a newcomer. <laughs> and share some of my thoughts. Um, I wanted to, to say, and I didn't get a chance to say before, that the State of Maine's Juvenile Justice Advisory Board was a uh, very dysfunctional uh, board when I came on. And over time, with a new chairperson, and I'm not saying that needs to happen here necessarily, but there were some changes in the composition of the board and things dramatically improved at that point. This may need to happen here. I don't know what the process is for that, but I'm seeing uh, son of, Mr. Reddit referred to it, a strange relationship between certain members of the board and the director's office that I feel uh, is not objective. And uh, you really, and I agree with Mr. Reddit on everything he said, uh, you really need to take a look at what the job roles and functions are of uh, the director of schools because I feel that that person's experience and uh, how they handle things, anything from a budget to uh, personnel in the schools and the rest of it, you really need to have a, a strong person in that position. Um, just being a nice person may not cut it. And um, I don't know what the solution to that is, but um, I think over my career in child welfare, looking after the needs of children who to no fault of their own, removed from their families, um, I know in my heart what is right for children. And um, I think that I could do a good job on the board just as well as Mr. Reddit. Um, and I really appreciate uh, his comments tonight, I will say that. Um, I'm pleased to hear that he sees some of the same things that I do also. So um, thank you very much. All right, well let's thank our candidates. Dennis comes and uh, gets ready for our third set, which will be our candidates uh, for Fifth County School Board District 3. We have any candidates from District 3 here? All right, great. As soon as you can be making your way up, and Mr. Dennis will get your name tagged there. Are there any other candidates here tonight for District 3 Fayette County School Board? Candidates uh, were either emailed and uh, called. 
at least left a message, and some of them did not even return the message. So, all right. Thank why don't you know, we got all the names out here, even though we know it's only one candidate here, let's just see who did not show up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Is it Fleps? Yes. And Mr. Fleps, please come. You have uh, three minutes and uh, introduce yourself and watch your timekeeper down here. He'll let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Okay. Uh, I'm Tom Fleps. I'm running for position on the uh, Fayette County School Board, District 3. I was appointed about a year ago to fulfill the seat that was vacated by a sitting uh, board member. I bring to the board my experience in both the private and the public sector. In the private sector, I was instrumental in revamping service operations in many companies and returning them to profitability. In the public sector, I acted as councilman and mayor in Lucas, Texas, and during my term, I implemented many new programs, including the foundation of a police department. I'm very versed in working with school districts. Our town was intersected by six school districts, and I was uh, working closely with one when they went from an elementary district to a 12-year district. When I left office, the city was financially sound and we had just uh, upgraded our roads and waterways. My educational background is that I have two degrees in management and I'm licensed in the electrical field. I'm very concerned about the education of our students. Currently we have an 80% graduation rate, but according to the ACT college placement scores, only 3% of our students are ready for college courses. And I don't believe that a high school graduate should have to take remedial classes in order to go to college. Now we're spending 41.8% of our property tax money to fund the public school system. We're spending about the same amount per pupil as surrounding counties, however our scores are much lower. Now the state says we're an exemplary school district, however I do not feel that our scores uh, reflect that. I think we need to also emphasize more on vocational training for students that would like their education to go in that direction. And I believe that we owe our students the best education possible so that when they get out there in the job market, they have the tools so they can compete for those good paying jobs. And since my tenure on the school board, I have seen the actions of some cause us to lose faith in our school system and I want to change that. However, it takes a concerted effort. We need to put, put away our old animosities and hatreds and move forward towards a common goal. Great school districts don't just happen. It takes a combined effort of everybody. I'm asking for your vote this election and asking you to join with me to move our school district forward so that one day we can truly say that we actually do have the best schools district school district in the state. Thank you. Since you're the only candidate, you just remain there. And, uh, you have questions for Mr. Flett. All right, Mr. Leggett has a question, I believe. Mr. Flett, I'll ask you the same question concerning the uh, status of the schools. Uh, how we rank in the state, what do you propose to do to uh, hopefully turn that around? Well, we need to find innovative ways to educate our children. Now, we can go, we can do a common core, no child left behind or whatever. And all that is, I believe, is another government program to, to help us to achieve mediocrity. Now, what, there are you read about them in the paper. Different schools, there's some exemplary thing they do. For example, in, down in Binghampton, uh, there was a school down there that boosted up the uh, students' reading grades, I believe it was a year and a half. And uh, I know, I worked in Binghampton, and I know those kids got to climb up to get on level ground. I mean, it's pretty bad. So I asked our, our uh, superintendent of schools, have you called anybody down there? Because reading and math are our two worst subjects. No, he hasn't done it. So we need to reach out and, 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 and find out what's, what people are doing right, because evidently we're not doing it. And uh, there's also uh, different grants by corporations. I've been involved in getting some. 
They're not your big hundred thousand, half million dollar grants. They're the small twenty thousand, ten thousand dollar grants. But they go a long way to getting the children involved and making education interesting. And it, when education is interesting, then I think you're on your way to success. All right. Next question. Well, basically what a charter school is, it's, it's a, it takes your tax money out of the public schools and it goes to the charter school. So it's funded by your tax money. Now the charter school has to fall under the same guidelines we have to fall under, the desegregation order, the majority to minority thing and, and all that stuff. So uh, I, I do not believe it will be successful mainly because it'll take much needed funds out of the public school system and also the judge is going to be involved in this because they will be under the same standards as we are with this desegregation order. All right, another question? Yes, I'm aware of it, and my understanding is that Common Core has been s suspended at this point as far as the state goes until they delve into it further. Some parts of it have been implemented already, but uh, I just, I remember when I went to school, and I, I went to small country school, and when I got out of school, I could go to college, I didn't need remedial classes. Now there's all these different remedial classes, in fact the colleges are thinking of char back charging to high schools for these remedial classes because it's, it's taking money out of them to get the kids up up to it. So I don't know, I, I'm kind of skeptical of big government programs. I think more of it needs to be done on a local level. And uh, as Common Core, I, if it went away, I'd be, I'd be happy. All right, another question? Yes, right there. Good evening, Mr. Slips. In my humble opinion, you are a great addition to our school board and, and I fully support your re-election. Uh, Thank you. I, do, I want to clarify one thing. Having, holding people accountable and being disagreeable or being disagreeable on certain issues is not hating someone. Uh, in Fayette County, we have students go through our school system some of them go through and they are scholars. And while some of them don't graduate and some of them have problems throughout. In your opinion, what is the difference between these students that, that are scholars and the ones that, that are low performing? Well, some have great parent involvement. And that, that goes a long way. If your parents are pushing you, you know, you're, you're gonna do better. Some of this, but since our scoring is so low, what is the definition of a scholar? You know, is a, is a scholar the same as when we went to school? Is it the same, does it mean the same? Uh, I don't know at this point. We, well, the last graduation, the high school class got over a million dollars in uh, uh, grant, grants to go to college. But looking at the ACT ratings, only 3% of those, that, that, all that money is not going to mean anything because they can't do the work. So, therein lies your problem. Okay, 
say, let's say you get reelected. What would be your dream team as, as for the other people that would be working with you on the school board? Could you repeat that? I didn't hear the first part. Okay. Let's just say you get reelected, okay. okay? And you can have anybody else sitting on the school board with you as a dream team to get the work done, to like live within your means. Who would be those other people? Well, I'd really, I'd rather not mention that because I'm not running, let's put this, I'm not running against anybody. I'm running to get the education system back up. And uh, whoever, whoever's on there is willing to go in that direction with me, then climb on board. Can I ask another question? Have you found some people on the school board presently who are easier to work with? I have found more easier to work with than not. More, the majority of them are easier to work with, yes. Okay, thank you. Which school board member is it that you replace? Uh, David Barnes. Thank you. Since Miss Cindy opened that door, uh, <laughs> can you enlighten us as to why he left the school board and now wants to come back? You know, I don't know. Beyond it, that'd be a good question to ask him. Of course, he's not here. But uh, I think we need to focus our questions on Mr. Flip's candidacy and not on some form of school board. Other questions for Mr. Flip? All right, there's one here. Yeah. I would, uh, I'm very much aware that over the last uh, number of years, uh, the, the school system has kind of been referred to as uh, an employment agency. Somebody needed a job, they got a hold of whoever got them a job. I wanted to blame the administration for that, but I find, found that there's a number of school board members that does not want to change anything because somebody would lose their job. In other words, now I'm, I'm asking your opinion on that, and do you think it's a administration, or is it a problem? Is it an administration problem, or is it a school board problem, or both? Well, now the superintendent is the one that does the hiring and the firing and, and whatever, moving people around in positions, provided he doesn't go beyond what the budget allows him. And one thing about being an employment agency, if it's somebody else's relative that's employed, employed it's an employment agency, but if it's yours, it's, it's fine. So that, that's, a lot of that goes on too. So you gotta just watch where the fingers are pointed. I don't know if in, in your time, uh, that you, since you've been a member, that the committee uh, assignments were, were aligned. Uh, I know Ms. Pittman brought that in. Uh, do you think that's been advantageous, or do you think that uh, most of the business can be taken care of at, at the regular meetings? Well, I, I have mixed feelings on that. Um, a lot of times, we'll discuss something in, in a in a committee meeting, and then it'll be forwarded to the uh, to the board for a vote or whatever, and then we'll go through that. Thing. So in that case, no, it's not. And I've been in committee meetings that lasted almost as long as doggone board meetings. So sometimes you wonder, you know, is it worth it? Not? It can be a useful tool, you know, but uh, so far, fifty-fifty.
but you had an 8% decrease in teachers, and yet you had an 11% increase in non-instructional personnel. Um, what do you plan to do about that? Well, some, now some of the schools that were closing, we didn't have a lot of students in the classes, so that may be part of the reason for that. Uh, some some uh, non-instructional staff that's been hired was, was necessary. Now, Mr. Teague does the hiring, so we don't get to look at every, you know, he'll, we'll get a paper, this person's been promoted or this person quit or we hired a person, but he doesn't come to us with with that asking permission basically he has a permission to do that as long as he stays within his budget and um, that's where it is all right question one more uh, mm -hmm. i'm not in favor of government employees receiving bonuses we've seen examples of scandals with that uh, recently uh, in my opinion, stipends kind of run the, along the same parameters with the uh, bonuses, and therefore I'm not in favor of those. Uh, Mr. Reddick noted a couple of examples where it might be useful, but what's your opinion on stipends? Okay. Uh, the, the personnel that coach our athletic teams, they're teachers and they get a salary for teaching but they get a little extra money for coaching, for being a coach. And sometimes we'll get a federal grant to give teachers in certain, um, certain types of classes, um, say math, math is right now is real heavy, and uh, they'll give us extra money to give them a little a bonus in order to, to, to retain them. Now that's fine as long as when the stipends in, they realize that their pay goes back to pre-stipend times. We can't assume assume that. And the government, you know, they sort of give willy-nilly, and uh, so. But the teachers are aware of that. But stipends are good. We have, for example, our band director. He's he's like a social worker, and he's kept some of those kids out of out of some crime and out of out of jail too. So uh, there is benefit to it. If if they're being productive, yes. Right. Other questions? Nobody else has one. Uh, David, up here has one. Yeah. Then we'll come back to you. What's going to happen to those schools that when we say they're closed, but are they going to be used for something else? And is this going to be the burden of the school board to? Uh, if they're for another use uh, to pay the expenses of? Well, it's, it's really crazy, but I understand that some of the schools are owned by the school board and some are owned by the county that we're going to eventually close. Now, I know one of them, and I think, I think it's Somerville, I'm not sure, where they're going to move, they're planning on moving the school, the school offices down there, because right now we have people in different buildings all over town and get them all in one central building, which I think will be helpful. And also I think down the road, uh, having a centralized elementary school, centralized junior high, and centralized high school would be beneficial. So everybody would go to the same school depending on what the grade they're in. Right now we've got, got them all over the county. And I think that'll help a lot of in, of, in, for efficiencies. But I, uh, most of the schools, I, at this point, I don't know, that'll be up to the board to decide whether we want to sell what we own and up to the county to decide what to do with the ones they own. And my understanding is the county even owns our central office. So, All right. Other question? Yeah. I just want to follow up on my last question. Uh, I, I'm sure you can see where we've had use in the stipend program before. Uh, does the stipends come before the board for approval before they're paid out? Uh, on on the ones that we're paying out of the out of the budget, yes. But the federal ones, or, or the state ones, they'll just say, "Hey, we're going to give you this money, but this is to, you know, retain math teachers or whatever, you know." So they that's dictated to us. All right. Thank you. 
right. Mr. Leggett. Would you be in favor, as a school board member, of the uh, a program that I believe Mr. Reddick spoke of, of tying the academic performance to the director's contract? Oh, the superintendent of school, but that's part of his responsibility. And if, if improvement's not made there, then the contract's not renewed. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. That, among other things. I looked at that contract a few months back, and let me tell you, it's almost impossible to get rid of a guy without paying him his full salary. And unless he violates some policy or something or, or does something really terrible. And I think what we need to do in the last year of the superintendent's contract, we need to do a search. First, we're going to need to tighten that contract up so it benefits the school district, you know. And then uh, we need to do a search. We don't need to say, okay, your contract's up in June and July. We're starting to look for somebody. We need to, we need to have candidates. And the, the current uh, superintendent, if he still wants to keep on being superintendent, he can reapply for his job. It's a common, commonly done in business, and uh, I don't see why we can't do it here. I have other questions. Yes. Mr. Fleps, the, we've talked about schools closing and buildings being basically school property and some of the county property. Do you anticipate any of the school properties that are being closed possibly being used for an alternative school since our existing alternative school was torn down from new construction? And what, do you, and what is your opinion on the beneficial aspects of alternative schools to safety and Sort of take away some of the static in your standard school population. Well, the uh, the judge basically is is part of our deal with him. We're not we're not going to have those schools. I mean, you know, uh, right now, maybe down the road sometime. Uh, as far as the use of the buildings, uh, I mean, that's that's to be decided. Well, I just want to say we, we all know the school has problems and escaping to a private school doesn't solve anything because that 41.82% of your property tax money still comes to the public school system. So you're writing a check to, to the school system and then you're writing a check to private school too. So, so that's, that's not, um, I don't think, a good use of your money. But we need, uh, we need to be more demanding. I mean, the main thing a school system is supposed to do is educate the kids. And here we have all these little sidetrack things going on, and, and uh, I think it's a diversion, to be honest with you. That's, I mean, it might be conspiracy theorists, but um, we need to focus on getting those kids ed educated. Because if you don't, you don't educate them now, when they get out in the workforce and all they can get is a menial job, then you're going to be partially supporting them for the rest of their life. And then when people can earn a decent living and uh, support their families, they feel good about themselves, they become productive members of society, they become taxpayers, everything benefits. So I think the education is very, very important and we need to be moving in that direction and get our other business done and focus on that. I appreciate everybody coming out and uh, I would appreciate your vote come this election. Thank you very much. All right, let's thank Mr. Flip.